Let's make a scheme of uh, thymus that will hopefully help us to understand the real slides. So the surface of thymus is covered by a fibrous capsule from which uh, connective tissue septa radiate into the deeper tissue, subdividing it into uh, pseudolobules. So not, the lobules are not completely separated, but partially they are. And on, at the first look, we will realize that there is a more pale region called medulla. It has less lymphocytes. And there is a darker region called cortex with much more densely arranged population of T lymphocytes. So that's why it's also darker in the in the in, in the microscope. So we got this this darker cortex and more pale medulla, right? Moreover, the medulla contains eosinophilic concentric structures called Hassel's bodies, which are collapsed epithelial cells. So we got the fibrous capsule on the surface, we go the connective tissue septa, we got lobules, thymic lobules, and uh, there is a cortex where the maturation of uh, T lymphocytes occurs. T lymphocytes, by the way, T lymphocytes are named after thymus. And uh, once they mature and are selected, so those that survive the selection are transporting it into medulla, from which they are drained via a post capillary venule into the blood. So medulla has the su surviving surviving T lymphocytes. Now the tissue, the skeleton, uh, let's say of the thymus. It's made of the reticular epithelium, not a reticular connective tissue like in other lymphoid organs, but reticular epithelium. Uh, in cortex, there is so-called hematothymic barrier. Or blood thymus barrier. And the histological layers are as follows. The endothelial cells are connected with each other with tight junctions. Second, there is a continuous basal lamina of the of, of that capillary. Third, there are cell projections of the reticular cells that are surrounding the capillary. Literally forming another layer.
and the, th the reticular cells have given their own basal lamina. The reticular cells are moreover connected by tight junctions. So we got the continuous capillaries with the lowest per possible permeability. Continuous capillaries. They have a continuous basal lamina. Uh, these are thymic cortical epithelial cells with basal lamina. the blood and its antigens is isolated from the T lymphocytes that mature here in the network formed by the projections of the thymic reticular epithelium. So these are the T lymphocytes also no, known as thymocytes and they are isolated from the blood antigens. So it's the reticular thymic cells that decide which antigens will be offered to the T lymphocytes well, I forgot to mention that here we got also tie junctions that are preventing any molecules to pass uh, through the uh, intracellular space. This selection, which antigens will or will not be offered to the maturing T lymphocytes, is essential for the selection of lymphocytes and for their training. Because in the cortex uh, the, uh, the T lymphocytes undergo uh, recombinations, somatic re recombinations or mutations uh, of alleles coding the variable part of T cell receptor abbreviated as TCR. This T cell receptor is by definition uh, the, the, the important receptor of T lymphocytes and uh, so random random variants of T cells uh, are produced with div uh, with billions and billions of combinations of various T cell receptors but there is a selection two step selection it's either positive this means only uh, T lymphocytes uh, that uh, are able to recognize the MHC molecules type 1 and type 2 can survive surviving only T lymphocytes recognizing MHC MHC is major histocompatibility complex okay class one and two molecules, but second step is negative selection. They don't have to react against these own body molecules uh, too strongly.
tolerating. So it's all uh, own MHC molecules. So the, uh, the selection results in like 98% of apoptosis and only 2% of T-lymphocytes survive this training and these are cells that uh, will retain either the CD4 molecule, we call them CD4 plus positive, that will become T helpers, or CD4, uh, sorry, CD8 molecule on the surface, they will become the T cytotoxic lymphocytes. And they have uh, to possess a functional T cell receptor, but at the same time tolerating MHC to prevent autoimmune response. Now the medulla looks a little bit different. We got this uh, network of reticular cells connected by desmosomes and this network provides support to lymphocytes And that's the reason why it's difficult, so difficult to see the reticular cells in the routine sections, because they are, they seem to be hiding behind the network, especially if you got a thicker histological section, right? So these are reticular epithelium cell, epithelial cells. Here we got desmosomes. The cells have ton of filaments uh, maintaining the shape. Here we have the T lymphocytes. And also in the middle of we got these Hussels bodies. that are eosinophilic, collapsed reticular cells. They have this concentric structure. They could be partly keratinized. They do express cytokeratins because these are epithelial cells and cytokeratins are intermediate filaments of epithelium and they have the concentric structure so resembling onion here and uh, other cells we got there uh, are macrophages And, folic and uh, dendritic cells. So we got macrophages and dendritic cells. Also in the cortex. Okay, the th thymic. Uh, reticular cells are also producing cytokines and various regulatory molecules that affect the maturation of the lymphocytes. So we go to the cortex here and the medulla.